there's really only two reasons a human being does anything. And the first reason is to move closer to some sort of reward or to increase the likelihood of achieving a desirable outcome. The second reason is to move away from some sort of punishment or decrease the likelihood of an undesirable outcome. These two poles essentially dictate all of our behavior as human beings. And that's actually how all mammals operate. It's a simple behavioral mechanism of reward and punishment that drives our behavior. Over the long term, in, in, when you're talking long-term relationships, long-term scenarios, reward is a more effective motivator than punishment for mammals. That's kind of an unfortunate truth because our world and our society hasn't really factored that in, hasn't really adopted the science behind human behavior. And we live in a very punishment-oriented society. We are often treated poorly for things that other people or entities or organizations think we do wrong. And when I say punishment, I'm using this term very broadly. So punishment doesn't necessarily mean like you get the belt now. It could, to be sure. But um, punishment can also be things like shame, criticism, judgment, guilt, rejection, isolation, um, teasing even. These are all undesirable things. These don't feel good when we experience them, right? And so when we identify this behavior that I have typically gets followed up with by undesirable outcomes from other people, that's a punishment. And that's intended to teach us, you should stop doing that thing. Why this is important is you are the manager of your own life. Now, we can't control the world you live in. We can't control the society you live in. We can't control how other people react to you. But we can control what type of managerial style you use to try to motivate yourself. And that's really, really important because most of us use primarily punishment-based mechanisms to try and reinforce ourselves and correct our own behavior. If you are using a punishment-based reinforcement strategy to try to get yourself to do the things that you want to do or that you know you should do, you are engaging in a behavior, in a habit that is making your life gradually more difficult as time goes on. And again, some of that is going to happen anyway. It's sort of just the nature of the world that we live in. But when we experience primarily punishment as the mechanism that shapes or changes our behavior, the difficulty of life just continues to gradually go up over time. And the majority of the punishment that you experience, especially if you're an adult listening to this, most likely comes from within. That's not to say that other people or other entities out there are not treating you unfairly. I am quite sure that many of them are. But if we're talking just raw frequency, most of it probably comes from you because most of your feedback, period, comes from you. You are in your own head every waking second of every day and constantly commenting on everything you're doing, have done, might do. And if you are using punishment-based mechanisms to try to get yourself to do things, you're on a very, very difficult path in life. We're going to break the rest of this content down into two sections. First, I'm going to explain why using self-punishment is actually a terrible idea in the long term. And then I'm going to talk about how to actually change it. But before I get into the how, I want to make sure I really get you on board with this idea that this is something that is worth changing, that this is something that is creating or exacerbating that kind of closing in sense that life tends to get, where it's like every day requires a little bit more from you than the day before did. But every day you feel like you have a little bit less to give than you did the day before. And you're trying to kind of project this in the future. And you're asking yourself, how long can I really do this for? Am I going to hit some breaking point? Am I going to hit a wall here where I just can't do it anymore? Or maybe that's already happened to you. Maybe you've hit that wall. Maybe you've hit that wall more than once and you haven't figured out how to break the cycle of getting to that end point where you just cannot continue. I think what I'm going to tell you today would be the missing ingredient in that. So three reasons why self-punishment is not a very good, sustainable long-term strategy for behavior. The first and probably the most important is habituation. 
punishment is more effective than reward if you're looking at a very short time frame. But it, the effectiveness of punishment decreases over time, assuming that the intensity or frequency of the punishment does not increase. So think about the first time that you got critiqued for something at work. Like if you had never heard any negative feedback before, the first time someone said like, oh, you didn't do a great job on that. And that may not be how they said it, right? It probably really bothered you. Like it really cut just right to your heart. And you probably thought about it for a long time. You probably felt awful about it. You probably couldn't stop thinking about it. And it stayed in your head and continued to like modify and affect your behavior because you're continuing to think about it. But if you have been employed for 20 years, let's say, and, and every job you've ever had, you've gotten a high level of criticism and you've gotten to the point where you just kind of have internalized the criticism and you've said, I'm just, I'm not a very good employee. I'm not a hard worker. I'm kind of lazy. I'm not good at most things. Then when someone says those things to you, it doesn't really hurt that much because you've internalized the narrative and you've already decided those are true and factual statements about yourself. And so when someone says something about you that you already believe, it doesn't really hurt. And when it doesn't hurt, it doesn't motivate. It doesn't make you want to change anything. Now, that example, again, was an external entity, right? If this is the strategy you're using internally, what you may have noticed, or maybe you didn't notice it, and you're just now realizing it as I describe it, is that over time, you have to continuously up the intensity of the internal punishment narratives that you use to try to shape and organize your behavior. So maybe once upon a time, all you had to do was think one kind of slightly snarky thing about yourself and you'd be like, oh crap, I don't want that to happen or I don't want people to see that me that way. And you'd get to work and it would help you get going and it would help motivate you. But over time, you acclimate to the negativity it starts to not shock you as much. And when it starts to not shock you as much, it doesn't hurt as badly. And when it doesn't hurt as badly, it does not motivate as well. And so in order to keep ourselves motivated, we have to be constantly upping the intensity of our internal self-punishment. This has a huge cost. Really, it has multiple costs. It affects our self-esteem. It affects our self-concept. It affects our mood. And perhaps most importantly, at least in the context of changing your behavior, it affects your reward pathway. And if you constantly feel like nothing you do is ever good enough, it's always going to be shamed. It's always going to be judged. It's always going to be criticized. It actually long-term decreases your motivation. And that's where that pattern we discussed earlier in this video comes from, where life feels like this constant crossroads of like the expectations are just constantly going up, but my ability to meet them is just constantly going down. And once these lines start to cross, we are in trouble. We are in an unsustainable lifestyle where we cannot continue and we're going to crash, burn out, have a breakdown, pick your verb. It's not going to be pretty. The second downside to using punishment-based reinforcement systems internally is what are called loopholes. And so again, picture... You've got, you've got these two options, right? I could do this to move closer to a reward, or I could do this to move away from a punishment. The problem is with the punishment-based mentality, we often end up looking for ways that we can avoid the punishment without doing the thing or without changing the behavior. To give you an example, our dog, Dougie, I am way more picky about him being on the couch than my wife is. And so anytime I see him on the couch, I say, Dougie, get off the couch. And he gets off the couch. So technically I'm using punishment there because I'm I'm like not mean to him, but I'm I'm introducing an unpleasant stimuli because I'm I'm kind of raising my voice at him a little bit, right? And so that's that's punishment. All he learns from that is to not be on the couch when I'm around. He'll get on it any other time. He's probably on it right now because I'm at work and my wife's probably petting him and he's probably very happy, but I just don't like sitting in dog hair. Anyway, that's not the point, tangent. The point is all he does is he's, he's learned to find the loopholes. He's learned to figure out how can I be on the couch as much as possible, but not get in trouble, basically. 
And when you're the manager of your own life and you're the one creating the punishment, what you end up doing is you try to look for those same types of loopholes. Like, let's say you're trying to stop drinking and every time you think about drinking or every time you have a drink, you start to just like beat yourself up mentally. You're like, oh, I'm such a loser. I'm such a piece of crap. I'm so stupid. Why do I do this to myself and everyone I love? But there's a part of you that has a hard time with the idea of not drinking anymore, right? So you try to find the loopholes. Like, I don't want to feel the way that I feel when I drink, but it's also hard for me to give up drinking. So maybe I can find a way to justify my drinking or at least maybe do it differently. You, you, you mess around with it, right? I don't, I don't know exactly what the change is going to be. But you try to find a way to manipulate the scenario so that you can continue the behavior but avoid punishment. When you use reward-based mechanisms, which we'll talk about shortly, there is no loophole. The only way you get the reward is if you do the thing. You cannot trick yourself into thinking you've done the thing that you didn't do, and you do not get the reward unless you do the thing. So that's another reason that punishment is less motivational than reward. We end up just looking for the ways around the punishment without having to change the behavior. The third reason that punishment is not an effective long-term motivator is because the basis for human motivation is the equation between effort and reward. In other words, when you think about doing anything, there is a split second math equation that happens in your mind and your brain instantly assesses how much work do I think that's going to be physically, mentally, you know, all of the above. And how much reward will I get from that? How good am I going to feel during or after? And the results of this equation is what creates your motivation or lack thereof. That's why you sometimes can consistently do really hard things in your life, but you might struggle to consistently do really easy things. It's not that those things are too hard for you. It's that they're not rewarding enough for you. So like, why is it that a person can go work at a full-time job, eight or nine hours a day, and then they come home and they can't put the laundry away? Obviously, objectively speaking, your job is way harder, way more challenging than putting away some laundry, right? But your job is probably also more rewarding than the laundry, if for no other reason than the fact that you get paid for your job. Even if you hate your job and don't actually think it's important, you do get financially rewarded for it, if nothing else. And that's a motivator. So you might think, well, I really don't like my job, but I need the money and it pays my bills. So ultimately, at the end of the day, it is worth it for me to go to work, even though I don't enjoy it that much. Then you get home, you see the laundry and you think, I know I should put the laundry away, but I don't get paid to do that. And I'm just not that passionate about it. So even though the work is way lower, the reward is even lower still. And if the reward is lower than the effort, you don't want to do that thing. And your reward is very low. Your, I'm sorry, your motivation is very low. Long-term use of self-punishment strategies decreases our perception of reward from tasks. And so if every time you don't put the laundry away, you think to yourself, I am such a lazy piece of crap because I didn't put the laundry away, you're shrinking the reward that you perceive that you'll get from the laundry from putting the laundry away. And you're actually making it harder for you to do it next time because you're unbalancing that equation so that everything in your life just feels like a massive grind. And it feels like you're working, 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 working for nothing. You don't get anything from it because most things in life do not tangibly reward us. There is no immediate tangible reward from putting your laundry away. You don't get paid for it. Unless, I mean, maybe that is, there's probably someone listening to it, who's, to this who's like, that is my job. I get paid for it, but I'm not at home, right? Your home laundry. So you sabotage your own reward pathway and it gets to the point where life, life itself feels unrewarding. It just feels like a massive grind. So if I have successfully convinced you to try to move away from a punishment-based self-management style. Let's talk about how to do that. Good news is the how in most cases is actually really, really easy. It's a simple two-step process. Catch and invert. What, what I mean by that is the first step is that you have to notice when you are mentally engaging in self-punishment. That might sound easy, 
it's actually really hard. And the longer you've been doing this for, the harder it will be to catch those thoughts. Because if this is a habit that you've been in for quite some time, and most of us are, again, this is how the world treats us. And it's very, very difficult, very difficult. Treat yourself differently than the way the majority of the world treats you. It's a hard thing. It's an important thing. And this is also a little bit of a tangent. I'll make a whole other video on this eventually. It's a hard thing to live in rebellion or to live in opposition to the world. That's a pretty big task, right? And so the path of least resistance and the path most of us end up following, at least subconsciously, is to align with the world or at least to align with the little bitty subsection of the world that we interact with. So if you've been around people who are more punishment-based, your internal monologue is more punishment-based. And you probably don't even realize how often you do it. You might be doing this to yourself thousands of times per day. So when I say catch it, yes, that is technically an easy thing to do. But I want you to catch, I'm not going to say all of them because you'll drive yourself nuts. But if you could catch more than 50% of your self-punishment thoughts, that would be a great place to be. Try to notice every time you use shame. Try to, notice every, try to notice every time you use criticism. Try to notice every time you use threats, labels, insults. These are all forms of self-punishment. I will take this away. You won't get this. People won't like you. Punishment. Those are all punishment. It's probably way more pervasive in your mind than you think. Work on catching it is the first step. The second step is to invert. The good news-ish of all this is that punishment and reward can be applied, either one can be applied to almost any scenario by simply flipping around the stimuli and the outcome. So go back to the laundry example. If you're looking at your pile of laundry and you would like to have that laundry put away and you think to yourself, I will feel like a lazy bum if I don't put that laundry away. All you have to do is invert that. So you're telling yourself, here's the bad thing that will happen if I don't do the thing. Inversion simply means, here's the good thing that will happen if I do do the thing. Because again, if you use the punishment mechanism, I'll feel lazy if I do this. You start to make excuses for yourself, right? You start to say, well, I don't need to feel lazy if I don't put the laundry away because I've had a really hard day in XYZ. That's the loophole. That thought process is what we were talking about before. That's you trying to find the loophole for not doing the thing, but also not experiencing the punishment. And it doesn't work. It never really works. It just keeps us stuck. So instead of, I am, I will feel lazy if I don't put this laundry away, simply invert that. I will feel accomplished, or I will feel proud, or I will feel like I got something done if I put my laundry away, or I will be, that's more of an emotional reward, right? You could also go practical. I will find it easier to get dressed in the morning and find my clothes if I put my laundry away. It will make my mornings more efficient. It will make my house look nicer. And make sure, you know, if you promise a reward, make sure you follow through on it. So what I mean by that is if you say, I'm going to feel good about myself when I see all my laundry put away, then make sure that once you put the laundry away, that you actually take a moment and look at it. Because if you don't do that, you can't trust yourself. You're the kind of, you don't be the kind of person who promises rewards and then doesn't follow through. Because that will also decrease your motivation just as well as the punishment does. Catch and invert. I will, I will, I will hate myself if I don't study for this test. I will feel really good about myself if I do study for this test. It's just the same thought process, but you flip around the stimuli and you flip around the outcome. It's not what bad things happen to me if I don't. It's what good things happen to me if I do. Or if it's something you're trying not to do, then you invert it the other way around. I will feel bad about myself in XYZ way if I drink. Okay, how would you feel if you didn't drink? If you're trying to inhibit a behavior, then not engaging in a behavior is the desirable outcome. What will your outcome be if you can do that? Why is that good? Why is that something you want? I know that you know, this is just how our brains work. Just knowing it deep down in your subconscious is not enough. You need to be saying it to yourself. You need to be reinforcing those pathways. You need to be reminding yourself, there is something in this for me. This isn't just some arbitrary social expectation that I am subconsciously aligning with. I'm not just doing this because other people told me to do it. 
there is something in this for me. But if you are not consciously aware of that something before and during the activity, it's unable to serve as a motivator, and your motivation will be low. So I hope that this all makes sense to you. I hope that you're able to work on getting out of self-punishment mentality and into self-reward mentality. If you do that, I think what you might find is that those walls stop closing in on you and eventually start to actually expand out a little bit. And you start to feel like, I could actually do my day today. I could actually do the things. I could get this stuff done. And I'll feel good at the end of it. It won't just be like, oh, I don't suck. Because that's that's not that great. That's... That, you know, you work your butt off for a year at a job, you get your performance review, and they say meets expectations. That's what that is. You weren't terrible. That's actually not very reinforcing, right? That doesn't feel that good. You want a desirable outcome. And so many times in life, the only person who can create that is you. In your mind, through your thoughts, and how you configure your reward pathway. I really hope that you give this a try. I think it is one of the most important yet under-discussed tools that we have for managing mental health, productivity, and lifestyle in general. I'll see you next time. Take care.